Welcome viewers to the Saturday, July 13th edition of 284 News. I am Jaco Whitting, bringing you our top stories from this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin with news that Destin Johnny was formally charged with multiple offenses relating to last Saturday's shooting at UP Cineplex that left a female victim with gunshot injuries. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force confirmed the charges on Monday, stating that Johnny, a 30-year-old resident of Huntum's Gut, faces several serious allegations. Johnny has been charged with attempted murder, possession of a firearm with intent to commit an indictable offense, and unlawful possession of explosives. He is currently in police custody and is awaiting his appearance at the magistrate's court. Police also officially charged Andreas Norford with the murder of Kimo Letsam, a former resident of Long Look Tortola, earlier this week. The charges were brought against Norford on Monday, July 8th for his alleged involvement in the incident that took place on April 30th, 2023. Currently, Norford is serving a 30-year prison sentence at His Majesty's Prison in Balsam Gut for a separate murder. He was previously found guilty of the 2013 murder of Cornell Melbourne Francis, also known as Trouble. Alongside Norford, Vernon Bernard, and Jelani Marquis have also been charged with Letsum's murder. Bernard and Marquis were officially charged in April 2024. Meanwhile, the government of the Virgin Islands has announced an upcoming increase in the territory's minimum wage. Deputy Premier and Minister for Financial Services, Labor and Trade, Honorable Lorna Smith, OBE, disclosed that the minimum wage will rise to $8.50 per hour, effective from the 30th November, 2024. Madam Speaker, tomorrow, I will be asking my colleagues in the, on the government side, in the cabinet, to agree to the long-awaited minimum wage increase. I'm very pleased that we have gotten to this stage, and I believe that we will be uh, getting a, a, good, a good result. To provide further transparency, the minimum wage review report that informed this decision will be laid in the House of Assembly shortly. Following this, the report will be made available to the public for further information on the rationale and details behind the minimum wage increase. In other news, the British Virgin Islands Olympic Committee officially revealed the four athletes who will represent the territory at the 2024 Paris Olympic Games in France. During a recent press conference held on Tuesday, July 9th, the committee announced that Adeja Hodge, Kyron McMaster, Thad Letsam, and Rakoi Brathwaite will compete in their respective sports on the global stage. President of the BVI Olympic Committee, Mr. Ephraim Penn, highlighted the growth of sports in the territory, which attributed to the BVI OC's long-term athlete development program. We had a total of six athletes on our program. And this will tell you how good, how good our program is and how good the athletes are. We had six athletes on the program, and down to the 30th, they were still in contention, all of them were in contention to qualify to go to the Olympics. Unfortunately, two did not make it. Um, Eldred Henry and Chantel Malone. But we had Kyron McMaster making, Adeja Hart, Tad Letsom, and Rikoi Bradwitt. So I think we need to give ourselves a clap for doing a job well done. The 2024 Paris Olympic Games will run from Friday, July 26th to Sunday, August 11th, and the athletes from the British Virgin Islands are poised to make their mark. The BVI Olympic Committee expressed confidence in their team, highlighting the dedication and hard work each athlete has put into reaching this elite level of competition. And viewers, with that, we take a quick word from our sponsors. Stay with us. We'll be right back. He hit me. Will CG cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Three-time champion, baby! I 
I did feel bad crushing all those arms and dreams. So I took them all out for ice cream, and then we got crushed. <laughs> anyway, CG handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG Insurance. Good like that. At Partners for Kids, your child's health and happiness are at the heart of everything we do. We've been the trusted medical home for children and adolescents up to 18 years old. And now, we are excited to welcome a new member to our family of healthcare professionals. Introducing Dr. Aisha Maxwell, our new family practitioner. Dr. Maxwell brings a wealth of experience and deep passion for pediatric and adult care, ready to join our team in providing first-rate health services to your family. At Partners for Kids, we believe in a collaborative approach to healthcare. With partners in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and clinical psychology, Partners for Kids, where caring is just the beginning. Visit us at Road Reef Plaza Tortola, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call us at 284-444-5437 or reach out at info at partnersforkids.com to learn more. Well, am I covered? Yeah, you're with CG. Remember when I was dabbling in knife throwing bingo? Well, one night I won. But I also got a bullseye. No, 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 no. In a beehive. I ran for hours. They caught me in the end, though. Anyway, I was covered, and I got to keep my trophy. Uh-oh. Best medical cover for the price. CG Insurance. Good like that. There are many ways to enjoy life. Like so many ways to count on popular. Welcome back viewers. I am Ricardo Palmer, student reporter from the Elmo South High School, and I will be presenting the following news segment. In a thrilling finale to the 2024 BVI Cricket Association T20 tournament, the Cavaliers emerged as the champions after defeating the RTW Falcons by 20 runs on Sunday. The contest at the Greenland Cricket Ground in East End Tartola kept fans on the edge of their seats until the final over. Kamal Haynes has a story. Electing to bat first, the Cavaliers set a formidable target, amassing a colossal 243 runs for the loss of six wickets in their 20 overs. The star of the show was Avish Kar Sukaran, who delivered a breathtaking performance. Sukaran, who was named player of the match and most viable player as well as the most runs of the tournament, smashed 133 runs off just 63 deliveries. His explosive innings featured 12 fours and 11 sixes, setting a solid foundation for his team. He was well supported by Roniel Jeffrey, who contributed a rapid 47 runs from 20 balls. Despite the Cavaliers' onslaught, Kirby Xavier stood out for the Falcons with the ball, claiming three wickets for 43 runs from his four overs. Xavier's efforts, however, were not enough to contain the Cavaliers' batting prowess. In their chase, the RTW Falcons put up a valiant fight. Austin McDowell was the beacon of hope for his team, unleashing a spectacular innings of 126 runs from 60 deliveries. His knock included four fours and an outstanding 15 sixes keeping the Falcons in contention throughout their innings. Unfortunately for the Falcons, McDowell's heroics were in vain as they were bowled out for 223 runs in the final over. Vishal Bharat was the standout bowler for the Cavaliers, capturing range 4 wickets for 26 runs from his 4 overs. Bharat's crucial breakthroughs ensured that the Cavaliers maintained the upper hand and ultimately sealed the victory. Well, here's a look at those highlights.
media also spoke to the Cavaliers captain Gopal Budram who commended his team for the solid overall performance displayed. First of all um, I must commend my batsmen they um, they came in and they assessed the situation really well I mean the first initial half of the innings wasn't that um, easy to bat on but once the guys got into the wicket and see that what the ball was doing a little bit yeah then in the last 10 we kind of tried to explode and get as many runs as we could have because we know the opposition and we know what they're also capable of definitely definitely this pressure coming into that final over from getting the 17th and the 18th over went in for some runs but with that said we also was missing one of our key bowler um he's the one who's been always giving us that good start with the new ball um jack noy facade but with that said and with that done uh, we show the strength that we still have in our on our bowling department we mightn't have executed our plans well but you know in the end of the day you know catches win matches we put on austin mcdowell and it was really good to get him back in the last over there Budram also spoke about the dominance of his Cavaliers team, which have now accumulated 23 titles across all formats in the BBI. Well, we, are, we consider ourselves as a very high octane team. We have had many talents come, many talents go, but we just keep rebuilding and getting more talents coming into the club. I mean, the amount of um, the trophies and titles that we have won, um, I think it's 23 and counting. Um, this is my actually my fourth title in a row, one T10, and this is my, my hat trick of um, T20 titles. So I'm pretty happy with myself um, as doing my part as in the team. And I'm really happy to lead this bunch of guys here. You know, they're, they're really good, they're really talented, talented bunch of guys. So I'm very happy. Reported for 284 News, I am Kamal Haynes. The recently concluded 2024 Najiko and the Interpath Junior Caribbean Squash Association Championships held at the Tortola Sports Club in the Virgin Islands has been celebrated as one of the best executed junior CASA tournaments in the competition history. Kamal Haynes has a story.
Representatives from the competing nations echoed this sentiment during the closing ceremony, marking this year's edition as the most successful to date. Trinidad and Tobago's coach Ryan Jagasar, Cayman Islands coach Cameron Stafford, Jamaica's coach Taija Lumley, and Bermuda's manager Michael Franklin were among the voices praising the event's organization and execution. They commended all those involved in hosting the tournament in the Virgin Islands for the first time in 17 years. Listen, I've been around for a little while now. This is my 25th year being involved in Junior Castle. I have to say, this has been one of the most exciting castles ever. I want to give a big thank you to Michael Franklin for insisting that we have the under-11s count as points. Because this time, this castle was the only time I've ever seen coaches in the back counting points in the middle of the matches. Every match you see the coaches, two plus three is six, one plus five is just, oh gosh, we have to get five points, I get five points. That, this castle, honestly, was one of the most exciting, nail-biting castles we have ever had. So thank you. I'm really happy I get to go last because everybody said everything I wanted to say already. Thank you to all the sponsors, thank you to everybody who made this tournament happen, thank you to all the volunteers, the entire everybody, the club, the drivers, Julie, everyone. This tournament has been so amazing. I pray to God we don't have to wait 17 years to come back here again. <laughs> First of all, thanks to Adam and his team for hosting such a wonderful event. And I do agree with Micah, this has been one of the best junior tournaments I've ever seen. So well done to you and your team. Also, a special thank you to Adam, Adam and his team. Um, you guys really pull this one out. Very well organized. Tireless days for our coaches and managers. Agreed? Yeah. But, anyways, it was well organized and it was well run. Thank you guys for that. There's so many people here to thank, but uh, I know I'm going to forget some, so I'm sorry. But everybody here has made this happen. It's probably been one of the most uh, well organized junior castles I've been a part of. Yeah. The 2024 edition also marked the BVI's most successful performance in the history of the Junior Caribbean Squash Championships. The host nation secured three gold medals in the girls under 11, boys under 13, and boys under 17 categories. Micah Franklin of Bermuda and Liliana White, manager of Team Barbados, specifically acknowledged Adam Murrells, coach of the BVI national squash team, for his pivotal role in elevating the standard of squash witnessed at this year's championships. I was a part of the junior executive committee who helped with the seatings and also some of the logistics before they started. But not only that, I am uh, good friends with Adam before he started taking on this job here at Tortola. And um, uh, based off the time that I've spent with him, uh, I've seen what a fantastic job he's doing here in Tortola with the junior programs, with the sports development and the club. And um, you know, as a competitor and as a, a coach, you know, it makes me a little bit uh, scared because he's doing so well. His, his team might clean up everything next year. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it, at the end of the day, this is all great for the Caribbean. Uh, the separation from OECS to Tortola and St. Vincent the Grandines have been a great move. Um, SBG and then also Tortola have been fantastic this tournament. And I think all the countries stepped it up this year to make it a really competitive Dignitaries present at the event included the Minister for Sports, Honorable Shari De Castro, and Premier and Minister for Tourism, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley. Premier Wheatley expressed his satisfaction with the positive feedback from the participating countries and extended congratulations to the BVI Squash and Racket Association and everyone involved in successfully hosting the tournament. This is truly excellent. I'm truly proud. Of the effort, I want to say a big congratulations to all the individual winners, all the country winners, and of course, uh, the entire event is absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, we believe in, in the power of sport to unite people. Uh, we believe uh, hosting these, uh, these championships will inspire the growth of squash uh, here in the Virgin Islands. I want to congratulate the BVI Squash Racket Association uh, for the great work that they're doing. Coach Adam Murrells highlighted the significance of the BVI hosting the tournament after nearly two decades. He reflected on the gradual improvement of squash in the territory, culminating in this historic performance for Team BVI. It's been since 2007 since the BVI has hosted this event, so this was massive for us. 
massive for us to bring it back here to the BVA. So again, thank you to everyone that's made it happen. Thank you to everyone that's come down and supported us and for all the BVA lot and I think hopefully all the other countries as well. I think you'll recognize that the BVA team have been steadily improving. They've done incredibly well this time. They've, they've surpassed themselves. It's been a historic year for BVI. We haven't won a gold medal since 2009, and we managed to get three gold medals this year. So a huge congrats to Team BVI. The successful hosting and performance at the 2024 Junior Casa Championships have set a new benchmark for future tournaments. Reporting for Tweet for News, I am Kamal Haynes. With that, we take a quick word from our sponsors. Stay with us, we will be right back. Orange alert! Orange alert! Fire is spreading across the BVI! The fastest, most reliable, and affordable fiber internet service is here for you! Look out for fire in these new locations Slaney, Duff Bottom, Manual Reef, Sea Cows Bay, Albion, Hannah's, Palestina, Pleasant Valley, and Havers. Fiber is in your area. Call 444-4444 or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives, and that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Seven beautiful contestants are vying for the crown of Miss British Virgin Islands 2024, each promoting their platform and sharing their reasons for joining the pageant in a recent interview with Tuit for Media. Student reporter Ricardo Palma filed this report. Contestant number one, Audacia Adonis, has dreamed of participating in a Miss British Virgin Islands pageant since childhood. She believes the pageant provides opportunities for young women to showcase what being a Virgin Islander means to the community. Contestant number two, Akisha Roberts, sees the pageant as a platform to highlight different aspects of BVI culture. If crowned, she plans to focus on island beautification. By partnering with the Ministry of Communication and Works and the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sustainable Development. Contestant number three, Cersei O'Neill was motivated to join by her platform, which represents BVI culture and values. She emphasizes that the Virgin Islanders are the voice and the face of the British Virgin Islands. Contestant number four, Stacey Ann Bob, was encouraged by the motivation she received to join the pageant as a makeup artist. She is passionate about showcasing BVI history and culture, believing she can add a unique twist to the territory heritage. Contestant number five, Neria Griffith, a dancer, is excited to showcase the BVI heritage. She believes viewers will experience BVI culture through the pageant's various segments. Contestant number six, Shanta Connor, has multiple reasons for joining the pageant, which are main goal being to advocate for certain social issues facing the BVI. She emphasizes that while the BVI may not be well known, it has much to offer as nature's little secret. Contestant number seven, Daniel Hodge, has wanted to join the Miss British Virgin Islands pageant since she was eight years old. She sees this opportunity to promote her platform of financial independence and literacy for young children. Daniel Hodge believes the pageant represents BVI culture by showcasing how far the territory has come from the first festival queen to the present day. Reporting for 284 News, I am Ricardo Palmer.
also in the realm of pageantry, pageants committee chair for the Virgin Islands Prince and Princess 2024 pageant, Johansi Smith recently discussed the upcoming event during an exclusive interview with To It For Media. The pageant is set for tomorrow, Sunday, July 14th. Student reporter Ricardo Palma has the details. The territory is gearing up for an exciting Prince and Princess pageant scheduled for July 14 has revealed in a recent interview with pageant committee chair Johansi Smith. Smith speaking with Twitter for Media's Jaka Wooden share insights into the preparation and expectation for this year's events. This year's pageant boasts 11 contestants, promising a showcase of diverse personalities and talents. Smith expressed enthusiasm about the learning experience of working with the young participant, noting their transformation from initially reserved to vibrant performers during rehearsals. It's been an experience thus far. Um, we have uh, legendary 11 contestants. Um, so of course, you know, that's a lot of personalities we yeah. have to deal with. Um, so the preparations and just interacting with the children has been such a learning experience for myself as well. And it has been an awesome experience thus far. I, I cannot wait for July 14th so that everyone could see the personalities and the talents that I've seen thus far. A highlight of the upcoming pageant is the opening number, which will feature a special performance by the 2017 Prince. It's been, you know, it's been strange for me because when I first met the children, they seemed a bit reserved. They seemed a bit, you know, like relaxed. And then when they come to dance rehearsal, it's like a, the stage presence is switched on in two seconds. Like they, their personality show, they do the dance, they add their own flair to it. They have a time and it's not just about the children because we also want to build this team of legacy. So we have the 2017 Prince coming in to join them in the opening number. He's performing live for that and they have got to meet him, they had conversations with him. It's just been an amazing experience for myself, the children. And I even spoke to Jabari, who's a 2017 prince, and he told me, like, these children are on another level. <laughs> so, yeah, he's excited as well. Smith emphasized the event appeal has a family-friendly show, encouraging the entire families to attend. He noted the pageant's ability to inspire future participants, with many children already expressing interest in competing in coming years. The Prince and Princess pageant is traditionally a family event. Um, to be honest, you do want to bring your kids along, but I feel like the parents enjoy it more than the children. <laughs> um, they tend to come and they they be scoring themselves. Like they'd be like, "Oh, this contestant did this, blah blah blah." Mm -hmm. And to me, they're more into the pageant than the children. Um, but I know a lot of children have already approached me because I'm involved with a lot of schools, and they have already um, like approached me and tell me, "Hey." I come to the show this year because I want to do it next year or two years from now or whatever. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Notably, this year's pageant features four young men among the contestants challenging traditional gender norms in pageantry. Smith shared one male contestant's motivation to participate, aiming to demonstrate that boys can do it too. To be honest, they have been open to any suggestions or any critiques or any pointers we've given them. Um, I've n I haven't had any issues per se with them. They're they they they're just them. They're just ready to do their thing. And to be honest, uh, we had an interview segment just this weekend on Friday, mm -hmm. and one of the boys actually said okay. that you know the reason that he's in the pageant is to show people that I'm going to, to be, be outside of the norm. And pageantry is normally for girls, but I want to show them that boys can do it too and showcase our talents um, on a platform such as this. The community's enthusiasm for the event is evident, with the preferred seating section already sold out. Regular adult tickets are available for $30, while children 12 and under can attend for $15. Tickets can be purchased at GNC Trading Limited or the waterfront booth near the International Fair exit, with same price tickets also available at the door on the night of the event. Smith concludes the interview by thanking Keep Sponsors. I would just like to thank a few persons. I would like to start with Good Eats, who is one of our big sponsors. I'd also like to thank Mr. Popeye and his team for sponsoring some stuff for our events thus far. Luxury Rides, um, Party World, and Bella Blooms. For 24 News, I am Ricardo Palmer. Stay tuned to 284 Media for all updates regarding the pageant and to watch the full interview 
on all Tweet for Media platforms. And viewers, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and on our WhatsApp channel, as well as like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and X, formerly Twitter. I'm Jaco Wooding, so have yourself a safe and enjoyable weekend. We hope to see you at the Virgin Islands Prince and Princess 2024 pageant. Goodbye.